Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make creme caramel. So this is going to be in a little ramekin and it's going to have a caramel in the base of the ramekin with a, a custard mixture poured on top. Then it's going to be cooked um, in a basically a water bath and after that it's going to be left to, to cool down and then set completely before we turn it out. So I'm going to do this two ways. The same mixture but and going into the ramekins but I'm going to cook some in the oven and some in the instant pot just to show you that it can be done both ways basically. So uh, I should start off by preheating my oven to 150 Celsius, that's 300 Fahrenheit, um, and I'll go on to the ingredients. And for the, the caramel mixture, the sauce, I have three medium eggs, which would be large in the USA, and I've just beaten those a little bit. I have 50 grams, a quarter of a cup of caster sugar, a pinch of salt, 10 millilitres, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And in this jug, I have a mixture of milk and double cream or heavy cream. So I have 250 millilitres, one cup plus two teaspoons of milk and 250 millilitres, one cup plus two teaspoons of double cream. But you can vary those amounts. Um, you can use all milk if you want to, basically. If you're going to use all milk, I suggest it should be whole milk. And then uh, for the caramel to go uh, on the base of the ramekins, I have 150 grams, which is three quarters of a cup of caster sugar and 45 millilitres, uh, three tablespoons of water. And the first thing I'm going to do is to make the caramel. And you can do this in a, a small saucepan, but I'm going to do it uh, in my saucier just because I happen to have that out most of the time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my sugar into the pan and I'm going to put my water in and I'm just going to give that a mix around with a spatula and then once um, I start to heat this up, I'm not going to use the spatula. I won't stir, stir the caramel again at all. So that's good like that. So I'm just going to heat this until the sugar dissolves and the mixture begins to boil and it starts to change colour. And what I can do is I can swirl it around a little bit like that uh, so that as it begins to colour on the outside uh, I can swirl it and get the colour working through. And as you can see that's beginning to bubble now and I have to keep a watch on it so that it doesn't go too dark and begin to burn because that would give you a bit of caramel So as it bubbles like that, I'm just gently swirling the pan a little bit. And as the water begins to boil off, the sugar will become sticky and thicker and it will begin to caramelise. 
the water really is to just stop the sugar once it's melted from crystallizing and that's beginning to change color and as you can see that's colored quite nicely and that's as dark as I want it I think you can let it go darker if you want to but that's as dark as I want it so while that's still warm or hot and it's very very hot so you have to be careful I'm going to tip that into um, my ramekin dishes which I have uh, already prepared and I I have coated them in butter so I'm simply going to tip some into the bottom of each one so I'm going to put my milk and cream into a saucepan and I'm going to add into that my sugar and the vanilla extract and the salt and I'm going to heat that until it's just about boiling so I want it to be hot now um, I won't show you doing that simply because it's just going on the stove and it's going to boil uh, but I'll come back when it's hot and we'll go on to the next step which is to temper it temper the eggs with the mixture and then mix it together uh, my milk and uh, cream with the vanilla etc has uh, just about come to the boil so I'm going to take a little drop of it and I'm going to whisk that into the eggs very slowly to start with this is to uh, temper the eggs to loosen them up without cooking them so that they don't scramble whisking all the time and then I can pour the rest in and keep whisking like that And that's it basically so what I'm going to do is just to be on the safe side I'm going to strain that mixture into another jug and before I pour it into my ramekins And I'll take my ramekins and these have a ridge on them so I'm not going to fill mine right to the top
So I have four that I've done there and uh, one slightly smaller one and that will be good enough. So then I'm actually going to let those rest for about 10 minutes and that's going to help to some of the bubbles to release from the top. I'll let those sit there for a good few minutes, 10-15 minutes, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually covering the tops with some aluminium foil. I'm just closing it tightly around the top like that, that's good enough. And I'm going to put three of them into my instant pot and two of them I'm going to do in the oven and I'll show you that but first of all for those going into the instant pot I have my pot here and I'm going I have inside it a trivet which I'm going to stand the pots on and I'm going to put uh, 250 millilitres of water into the bottom of the pot like that. And I'm going to stand three of the ramekins on the trivet. and then they will be ready to cook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that up and uh, seal the vent. And when I close my Instant Pot, the vent automatically seals. And I'm going to choose to pressure cook and I'm going to choose uh, high basically and I'm going to cook them for nine minutes so I press start and what will happen then is my pressure cooker on the instant pot will come up um, get it fully pressurized the valve will pop up to say me tell me that it's fully pressurized and then it will start cooking for nine minutes and once that nine minutes is finished i'm going to leave it leave them in the pressure cooker or in the instant pot uh, until the pressure inside has naturally released so i'll cook those in that instant pot and then for the um the others i'm going to do that um, in a loaf tin basically and the reason for that is simply that I'm only doing two and the loaf tin um, will work very well. I'm going to put some hot water into the tin like that. I can top it up and I'm going to stand each of the ramekins in the pan like that and I'm going to put those into the oven and I'm going to bake them for 15 minutes and after 15 minutes I'm going to open the oven carefully because steam will come out and then I will take the aluminium foil off close the oven and cook them for another 15 to 20 minutes I want to cook them until um, they're still just jiggly in the center. And at that stage, I'll take them out of the oven and take them out of the loaf tin um, and put them on a rack to start cooling. And once I've done that, I'll come back and show you what they look like. I cooked my creme caramel in the Instant Pot. It didn't take long for the pressure to come up. Um, and then I cooked them for the nine minutes and then the pressure actually released in about 10 minutes, basically. So I took those out and 
Meanwhile, I uncovered the ones which I put in the oven and cooked those for the, the additional 15 minutes. So this is what the five of them look like. So these are the three which were in the instant pot. And if I give them a shake, you can see there's just a little wiggle on the inside. So that's good. And these are the two which were in the loaf tin. And I'm guessing that's still very hot, yes. So if I give that a shake, you can see that that's got a wiggle as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those to cool completely. And once they've cooled, I'm going to put them into the fridge. I'm going to cover them and put them in the fridge. And I'm going to leave them in the fridge for at least four hours. And then uh, after about four hours or so, either that or tomorrow morning, I'm going to come back um, and tip one out and we'll have a taste. I've chilled my creme caramel um, and I've taken one out of uh, the dish, but I'll, I've got another one here. And so uh, what I do is simply take a knife and run it round the edge. like that and then I'm going to turn it over onto a plate and hopefully with a bit of shaking and tapping it will come out. And there it is. So, they've got just a little bit of a wobble on them still. <clears throat> and uh, they've set up quite nicely. So, I'll actually just cut this one. See if I can pick up a slice. As you can see, it's still nice and wobbly. So, I'll have a taste of it. lovely and soft and uh, has that vanilla custard type flavour to it uh, and the sweetness of the caramel over the top. As I mentioned you can make the caramel slightly darker if you want to um, but for me uh, that's just about the, the right colour, that's how I like it. So um, I don't know whether I mentioned that if you want to do these all in the oven then you simply use a bigger baking tray that you can stand them all in and fill up with water. And I should say that um, from my perspective it was actually cheaper making them in the instant pot because uh, with the time taken to uh, bring the instant pot up to pressure then to cook and then to natural release that took about 20 minutes and the natural release isn't using any power that took about 20 minutes altogether um, whereas to preheat the oven takes 15 minutes then I cooked them in the oven for 30 minutes uh, and so just in terms of simply uh, sort of maths uh, if the cost of using each device was the same it would cost more to do it in the oven but of course heating the oven is also more expensive than heating the instant pot simply because it's a bigger capacity. Anyway, uh, that's just an aside. So I hope you've enjoyed the recipe and if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.